East Baton Rouge Gun Violence Collaborative is releasing the East Baton Rouge Public Safety Partnership. This is a strategy solely dedicated to reducing gun violence in East Baton Rouge Parish. The collaborative is made up of every single law enforcement agency in our community in partnership with the United States Department of Justice. Here with us today are representatives from those agencies, and I want to publicly thank them for the work being done to fight violent crime. They include the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Middle District of Louisiana, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Drug Enforcement Association, and the United States Marshal Service, the Louisiana State Police, East Baton Rouge District Attorney's Office, East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office, Baton Rouge Police Department, and Baton Rouge City Constable, the police departments for the cities of Baker, Central, and Zachary, and the police departments for the Baton Rouge Community College, Louisiana State University, and Southern University. Today, you will hear from many of these partners, including Mayor Sharon Weston Broom, Major Todd Harris of the East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office, and Deputy Chief Neil Noel of the Baton Rouge Police Department, District Attorney Hiller Moore, Chief Murphy Paul, and others who have been instrumental in developing this plan. As the Chief Federal Law Enforcement Officer in this district, I want to assure the public that these agencies have provided tireless and effort unique resources to the Public Safety Partnership and will continue to do so as part of the ongoing effort to remove criminals from our streets. As many of you are aware, I've been a prosecutor for over 20 years and a lifelong resident of East Baton Rouge Parish. This parish has always had a small segment of its population that is involved in violent crime. And the same holds true today. The Public Safety Partnership is designed to identify the worst violent offenders and concentrate efforts in that regard. As crime has evolved, this Public Safety Partnership has also evolved. Currently, the practices and procedures used by this collaborative are some of the best practices and procedures being used throughout the nation. But most importantly, the strategy will adapt to the situation that is unique here in East Baton Rouge Parish. The goal is to improve public safety. But understand that this partnership is always a work in progress, and we request your patience in its implementation. The Public Safety Partnership is dedicated to continuing to work together and reduce violent crime and keep intact the faith of the public in the system and to continue to provide justice for East Baton Rouge Parish. I will come back up once District Attorney Hillamore is going to speak, but as of right now, I'm going to turn it over the floor over to Nola Joyce, who serves as our Public Safety Partnership Strategic Site Liaison for Baton Rouge. Ms. Joyce. Thank you, U.S. Attorney Gaff. I, as he said, I'm Nola Joyce. Uh, I'm the strategic site liaison uh, for the Department of Justice, U.S. Department of Justice. I uh, will talk with you for a few minutes about what the Public Safety Partnership is and what Baton Rouge has been doing. Uh, the Public Safety Partnership is a U.S. Department of Justice wide program which supports local jurisdictions in the intervention, prevention, and reduction of violent crime by providing customized training, technical assistance, and concerted access to a wide array of Department of Justice law enforcement and programmatic resources. The East Baton Rouge has been part of the National Public Safety Partnership since 2019. They have been participating in trainings and leveraging technical resources to increase their capacity to reduce violent crime and enhance public safety in the parish. During this time, they've learned best practices, put them in use, 
uh, learned how it worked in the field, made modifications, and much of that work and knowledge is reflected in the plan that you will see today. My role is to connect the Baton Rouge to the federal resources and to support the local and federal partnership, a partnership that certainly existed before PSP. What is different here is that this partnership reflects working together, not just on a one event tactic, but over time in a very strategic way. And the whole purpose is to reduce violent crime and specifically gun violence here in the parish. Partnerships are essential in, to achieving comprehensive, uh, collaborative, and sustainable approaches to address local violent crime challenges. We know gun violence can be reduced. We know it can be reduced by coordinating and focusing resources across law enforcement agencies, the parish, and the community. What you see in this plan is just not talking about what law enforcement agencies are doing and will be doing, but it also carves out very specific responsibilities for city agencies and for community-based organizations. It is a holistic approach to reducing gun violence. The local, as I said, the local federal par partners here have been actively engaged with the PSP throughout this initiative. It is critical that as this initiative is winding down in Baton Rouge that the relation relationships continue. One of the guiding principles of the PSP program is sustainability, meaning that we may walk away, I may not be here, but the partnerships and the working arrangements that have been established during this time will remain. And the plan represents this commitment and shows in detail how this strategic, coordinated, focused approach will continue and be used to intervene and prevent gun violence in the parish. I've been involved in over a dozen PSP strategic planning efforts across the country. And I can say that Baton Rouge is among the few jurisdictions <coughs> willing to stand up and say we are committed to continuing our efforts and this is how we're doing it. Now, to prevent the specific, present the uh, specifics of this plan, I'll turn it over to first Baton Rouge Police Department Deputy Chief Neil Noel and then Major Todd Morris with the East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Department. Gentlemen. Thank you, Noel. Good morning, I'm Major Todd Morris with the Sheriff's Office and joining me is Deputy Chief Noel with the Baton Rouge City Police Department. Together we'll talk about a little bit about specifics of the public safety plan. The East Baton Rouge Gun Violence Co Collaborative is made up of partners that you see here today. We first began meeting back in February uh, at a workshop and began developing strategies of the East Baton Rouge Public Safety Partnership. Uh, we continue to meet weekly, every other week for the past uh, several months now to develop a plan uh, dedicated to reducing gun violence in our community. Uh, to accomplish this, we have defined specific goals, not only for law enforcement, but our prosecutors and our community members also. I'm going to turn it over to Deputy Chief Noel to talk about the specifics of the goals uh, and go forward with them. Thank you, Major. Hi, I'm Deputy Chief Neil Noel. Uh, this multi-year action plan represents a more informed, collaborative, and intelligence-driven approach to understanding and addressing the gun violence in East Baton Rouge Parish. As the major said, four primary goals were outlined in this plan, each with its own strategies and measures of success. Our first goal is focused on community engagement. We have to engage with young people involved in violence on the front end by providing them with guidance and opportunities to choose a different path in life. Um, Ms. Courtney Scott with the mayor's office is going to brief you a little bit more on that goal. Goal two, focused on prioritizing gun crimes in our court system, both at the local and federal levels. And we'll be hearing from U.S. Attorney and, and uh, Attorney Hill, uh, District Attorney Hill Moore a little more about that. Goal three is focused on addressing physical, physical conditions uh, in neighborhoods that contribute to the gun violence. And finally, goal four is focused on law enforcement itself, proactive policing, investigations guided by data, intelligence, and technology to reduce the gun violence 
specifically in our community. Courtney. Thank you, Deputy Chief and Mayor. I am Courtney, excuse me, and uh, Deputy Chief and Major, excuse me. I am Courtney Scott, Assistant Chief Administrative Officer for the Office of Mayor President Broom. I'm gonna primarily focus today on goals one and three, which focus around community engagement and municipal services. Creating this collaborative where the mayor's office is connecting funding and resources to alternative public safety models is key. <clears throat> this is going to complement the work that our law enforcement agencies will be telling you about today. It's important to note that our office is simply a convener, collaborator, and a catalyst to efforts that are happening with our community-based agencies and our neighborhood groups to establish work that's happening on the ground. These ongoing partnerships with community is pivotal for the future so that everyone gets to experience safety and that our young people have possibilities for hope in a brighter future. When convening high school students, college students, and community partners over the last month, over the last nine months for our ecosystem meetings, they shared with us that they want to be a part, they need to be front and center in making sure that their communities are safe. In order to achieve that, Mayor Broom has allocated funding from the CARES Act and the American Rescue Plan to fund Safe, Hopeful, Healthy. That will further create opportunities through an ecosystem of providers to work, to, to do work that reaches those at risk the most. The goal is to help people find alternative pathways. Our investments will go towards models like community violence intervention, group violence intervention, school-based outreach, and place-based neighborhood revitalization that leverages services from the Department of Work to reduce blight, properly light streets, and ide identify properties that attract negative activity in our communities. These alternatives will proactively provide mediation and conflict resolution in our communities before violent incidents may occur. This is also investing in mental health services to help community members deal with trauma that they may be experiencing. We have to offer a big thank you to Mayor Broom for advocating on behalf of community to work with Department of Justice, SAMHSA, and our state delegation like Congressman Troy Carter for their investments in Baton Rouge. At this point, we have $3 million in federal grant funding that we have secured with the help of the mayor's office. And we are also working with funding within City Parish to make sure that we're putting these services in the communities that need them most. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Hill Moore, District Attorney. Uh, first, I want to start by thanking all of the men and women that are here uh, and the men and women on the streets of Baton Rouge with the Baton Rouge Police, the Sheriff, all the other agencies you see and our federal agencies. Without the men and women that are doing that day in and day out work, we will not be here. Also for the folks you see here for the past several months or even longer years on weekly phone calls uh, that they've devoted their time and effort to, to come up with this plan. What I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is specifically gun violence and gun crimes. Around a quarter, or a little less than a quarter of the cases that come through our office involve some type of gun or weapon type of crime. What we're trying to focus on in our office in conjunction with uh, our partners here, including uh, Mr. Ron Gaff and the U.S. Attorney's Office, are those violent gun offenders that we see day in and day out. Over the past several years, we've been uh, doing gun reviews in the office. That is, anytime anyone is arrested, we take a look at the reports in the background and we try to make the case as good as we can. Unfortunately, because of the constraints that we had in the past, that would take us a month or so following the arrest to get to that point. I'm happy to announce that over the last three months with some additional resources, with the assistance of our Crimes Strategies Unit, the National Guard component as well, that at this point, we look at everyone that's been arrested uh, in the East Baton Rouge Parish Prison at two different times of the day, one early in the morning, one in the evening, and we look at the bookings. We look for those violent offenders, we look for repeat offenders, we look for gun offenders, we look for gang or group involved members. Steve Danielson of the Crime Strategies Unit, an attorney, uh, along with all of the other assistants that he has, 
compiles data and information background. It is how many times has this person been arrested? What are the arrests for? Does he have previous gun cases? Does he have pending cases? Are they out on bond? Are they a gang or group member associate? Is it a machine gun? Is it a ghost gun? Uh, have federal uh, government been involved before? That information is given uh, to assistant DAs that are on duty at the time, as well as the folks that you see here in an effort to let that assistant DA know that's on duty, that when you go before the court in bond setting, let the court know the information that you have so that everyone knows what they have in front of them with this offender and this gun offense. We believe that that's the best way for us to set a couple bonds for everyone to be notified and for us to make the best case that we can. Following that initial review that's again done twice a day throughout the night, uh, we then follow up with a further gun review by other investigators in the office with the assistance of follow up by these uh, folks that you see here. Also following that then, we interface with the United States Attorney's Office and the different federal agencies that are represented to ask, is this a case that, they're, that you're uh, interested in adopting as a potential federal case? And we do this on a routine daily basis. We have a very good uh, working relationship with those offices that you see here. Also rolled into this just coincidentally is that we are looking at changing the way our office does things, how we prosecute cases. Uh, I've been around this office around 45 years. Things have remained the same for the most part. We're now looking at going to a trial bureau method where we're going to try to take 12 assistant DAs out of the line of everyday work in a court, separate them, and have them be able to stay back at the office, spend much more time on those most violent offenders, make the best cases you can, try to push those matters to trial as quickly as you can. While doing this, we're also trying to set up a data system so that we can keep track of the number of arrests, particularly gun and violent crime arrest, to see what the outcome is. How can we do a better job? How are we handling gun cases here compared to other places? And what's the outcome that we're getting? And what's the desired outcome? So this is all working in collaboration with our partners. We hope that we will continue this. But again, I think this um, you know, hats off to the men and women on the street that do their job day in and day out, uh, that never get to be here at these conferences. because. Uh, this is not working or will not work without their uh, efforts uh, day in and day out. So thank you for being here today. And just to kind of piggyback a little bit off of what Miller said, yes, our offices are constantly meeting. Uh, my deputy uh, criminal chief and my criminal chief meet with his office, uh, as long as also with the uh, ATF and the DEA. Uh, with those partners, they'll be able to look at those cases, see if we can develop those cases into federal cases. And again, that partnership is, is really going great. Uh, also, as part of this uh, collaborative, uh, we have also uh, set up uh, quarterly meetings, and our first will be the uh, third week of January, which is being hosted by Louisiana State Police Department. So again, those are the things that we're doing to try to make this uh, strategic plan uh, go into effect and work uh, the way it's supposed to. And with that, I'm going to bring up uh, Chief Perfect Mall with the Veterans Police Department. Thank you, Chief Murphy, Paul Baton Police Department. <clears throat> Excuse me, I want to thank everybody for being here today. And, you know, everyone being here today demonstrates the importance of this public safety partnership. Uh, each of us play a vital part in creating a community where all of our citizens feel safe. And we've been working since the start of the year to implement these very specific uh, strategies and operations to reduce gun violence. Uh, while making the appropriate adjustments in an ever-changing environment. We understand that we have a lot of work to do to meet your expectations and also to meet our expectations as it relates to violent crime. What we have seen with these strategies since we began uh, working together is reductions in violent crime. We know that one homicide in our city is far too many. And although we are seeing these reductions in homicides, as well as other areas of violent crime, right now we've been averaging around a 20% reduction in homicides in the city of Baton Rouge. 
Uh, non fatals are down, uh, I think I looked at the third quarter, around 10% incidents. But let me be clear we are not going to rest. A lot of the initiative that you heard prior to me coming up here involves the intervention and the prevention. I want to just talk a little bit about the enforcement piece because it too is important. Because unfortunately that small percentage of individuals that are involved in violent crime need our attention. And we will continue to focus our efforts on those who are involved in shooters, shooting incidents, the shooters, <coughs> and involved in gang violence. Those individuals that are involved in violence in our city will remain our highest priority. And I believe as we continue the strategies that we talked about to recognize those percentages, reductions in homicides, that we can build on that in 2023 and continue to reduce crime with these strategies that we have in place. I am optimistic about the success that lays ahead. I am proud of the work that the men and women of the Baton Rouge Police Department are demonstrating every day. I'm proud of the working relationship that I have with our state, local partners that are standing behind me. And I can tell you as a law enforcement officer and as your police chief, it is essential that we believe that this job can be done. And together it will be done. And our partners here are committed to getting the job done. And the communities we serve deserve nothing less. I wanna thank the community because we would not have some of those uh, reductions if it wasn't for you picking up the phone and calling Crime Stoppers. If it wasn't for you showing bravery and stopping one of our police officers and tell us who those criminals are who are creating uh, a fear in our neighborhoods. I wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for your participation, for your cooperation during the summer of hope when we've seen some of the largest reductions and some of the uh, uh, barriers that were facing community police relations being broken down where you were sitting at the table talking to us, helping identify solutions, but more importantly, telling us who the criminals are in your community. Thank you. We hear you loud and clear. Baton Rouge, keep talking because we will never, ever stop listening. We're going to continue listening, and we're going to continue to build on these strategies, and we're going to continue to get those numbers down even more. We can do it together. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I would also like to say thank you to the Department of Justice Public Safety Partnership team for your ongoing technical assistance to align the work of our agencies. As you can see, it is indeed an all hands on deck here in East Baton Rouge Parish when it comes to reducing gun violence. And I want to personally thank all of our partners who are here today. The action plan shared with you today is a documented action plan com that combines law enforcement agencies at all levels, local, state, and federal agencies, protecting and serving our community to the fullest capacity and engaging our community-based partners in building an ecosystem of support to help the average citizen feel safer in our community and to interrupt the cycle of gun violence that destroys families. Collaboration has always been a way of life for us. But what you see here today is a higher level of cooperation to address a very real and persistent issue in this community. I know we can make effective and long lasting change in East Baton Rouge Parish. We are committed to an intelligent data driven approach that includes the entire community. If you would like to view this plan and the ongoing progress and updates, please visit 
www.brla.gov slash PSP. That's brla.gov slash PSP. Our agencies will continue meeting quarterly, as you heard, to discuss the outcomes. I want to say thank you uh, to everyone who has agreed to be a part of this uh, collaboration. And uh, now I'm going to turn it back over to U.S. Attorney Gap, and we will take any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Are there any questions? Attorney Gap, before we start, just wanted to tell everyone, uh, as the mayor just stated, uh, brla.gov slash PSP is where you will find this whole plan, including pictures from the February workshop where you see all of these people here represented and putting this together. Uh, today, we're just going to be taking questions specific to the plan. If you all have any questions specific to a specific case, please follow up uh, with that specific agency afterwards. Also, direct your questions towards the speakers who are here today. I have a question for uh, Chief Paul. Um, <coughs> Chief, I was just wondering if uh, the, uh, the areas mentioned in kind of that third uh, category, the third goal of addressing you know, physical conditions in neighborhoods, if any of those areas 